Welcome to Mini Lecture One. Um, this is Jack Livingston. I'm your professor for World Regional Geography. And I want to introduce you to a little bit different lecture style. This will actually be about the longest lecture you're going to get, only because of this introduction. What I do uh, throughout the semester is I give you very short lectures with a single idea in each one. Most of them will include only three, maybe four slides, and a few terms in each lecture. What I hope that you do with each lecture then is to grab onto the terms, make sure you understand them definitionally, and then look for the application that I'm using and hopefully look for a way of applying it to your life. So let's begin. Mini lecture one, what is geography? We're going to define the discipline. The important idea here is that geography is the study of what's, the where's of those what's, and the why of where those what's are. Now I realize that's a terrible sentence, but what I really want to do is take it apart, and maybe the, by showing you that sentence you'll understand um, the core ideas in a little less scientific way. Geography is a science that explores phenomena, that is anything, uh, and the distribution of that phenomena. So for example, we might look at the distribution of crime, okay, of crime events. Or we might look at the distribution of elephants. Or we might look at the distribution of microbreweries. Whatever you want to pick. That's a phenomenon. It's a thing. Or it's a, a event. Or it's an aspect of landscape. Phenomena. Then we look at distribution. In other words, where are those things? And in many cases, equally importantly, where are those things not? That is, what is their distribution? Do they cluster? In other words, do when we look at uh, elephants, do they tend to be together or are they solitary? Do crimes cluster or are they evenly distributed? Are they more in this place or less in that place? Then lastly, we want to know why. Geography would not be nearly as interesting or as important if it did not begin to look at the process and processes that lead to those distributions. In other words, why do certain things occur in one place and not in the others? Why do crimes cluster in an area? And why do they not? Why do we have elephants in some parts of the world and not in others? More importantly for those elephants, where do they exist within their range? And now why do they no longer exist in part of their range? What has changed that? So, consider. This is a dot map. It's a very interesting map from a few years ago, and the link is on our webpage. This is a dot map that represents every individual in the United States. Every single individual. Now, obviously, at this scale, those dots begin to aggregate. The dots are also assigned a representative color based on the ethnicity, the dominant ethnicity, uh, or predicted ethnicity of an individual. So what we can see are a couple of things here. First of all, this is a what? Human beings, the United States, and an attribute of them, their ethnicity or race, and where they are. Now what we can begin to ask is why? Why, for example, do we not see a whole lot of dots out here and the dots increase in density as we move eastward? And there's a lot of reasons for that to occur. We'll get into those later in the semester. I'm going to bring it down to a little more detail, and we can begin to maybe have you begin to look at what you think are the reasons for the whys of where people and different ethnicities are. This is a the dot map as I zoom in on the city of Pittsburgh. We can actually see the three rivers right here. And what you're going to notice is, in fact, there is an unfortunate reality in Pittsburgh is that there is a certain degree of segregation. That is, that in space, the African-American population, the white or Caucasian population, the Asian and Hispanic population exist in distinct areas with relatively little mixing, if you will. In other words, we can very clearly see neighborhoods, regions that are predominantly African-American, areas that are predominantly Asian, and areas that are predominantly Caucasian. It's a little interesting, it's a little interesting note, I guess, 
to see that it is difficult to pick out areas that are decidedly Hispanic. If we looked at other parts of the country, we would see that as well. Okay, so now what you've got, geography, the what's, the where's, the why's of that distribution, or the why, the where's are where they are. That's it for this lecture, and that's how each of these lectures is going to go. Just a few slides. Each of these micro lectures is up on our D12 site. Please look at those first slides always for your key terms, and then look at the application. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next lecture.